Dr. Decker said in AD 30, which is a book, the distance between a human being and the truth is a story. Therefore, I'm going to tell you a story. What was true thousands of years ago is still the truth today, tomorrow, and in years to come. Lies will die, illusions will fade, delusions will disappear, but the truth remains constant. I was born in Amadiyama, just behind you here, and growing up in Amadiyama, the early hours of the morning, about 1, 2 a.m., when the masqueraders are rehearsing once a year, once in five years, just to perform at the market squares. In the wee hours of the morning, we begin to hear drum beats. Very mellifluous sounds from the drummers. And while you're listening to them, you're either wondering what kind of music, what kind of players, or what kind of masquerades that we come up when they want to play because it's alien to you when you're small. But when you watch them in the market squares, you begin to appreciate the beauty of our culture. And when you're born and brought up in a home with many years of cultured living, naturally, the Africanness in you begins to search. So I could hear those drum beats. Now, going to the university, see a pathway, wanting to discover myself through the lenses of what we heard, now not see, but what we heard, because vision, they say, is the art of seeing things invisible. Then we had not seen, but we have heard. So it's a lens to me anyway. But when we now see the dances in the market squares, what happens? We begin to appreciate the beauty of the Africanness, the beauty of our culture, the beauty of our tradition. So going back to school, primary school, the secondary school, and then the university to study theater arts, the integral part of my study was understanding the Africanness, the beauty of the African arts. Therefore, after years of understanding these art forms, graduating, looking for a job, going to St. Catherine's College, Oxford University, Universal Studios, the key ingredients of my study is understanding the beauty of the Western technology, but maintaining the key content of the African culture. It's key because there's no business, they say, like show business. Therefore, when you understand the tenets of technicalities like we're doing here now, the beauty of the art forms remains the same. Look at this. With lights, how colorful am I? Am I colorful? That's the beauty of the African culture. I'm not talking about Afro future. No. That is some narrative that is key to Wakanda and all of the future Africa that is in front of us. But behind us is an Africa nobody is telling a story of. Therefore, I went back, looking back again through those lenses. Yes, I use the word lens because my ears could see. They could hear, I know, but they could see too. And I could see from those sights and my hearing, I decided to create a dance called what? Seki. Seki means dance. Originally, Seki was called Owamaputi. Owamaputi means dance of the water spirits. But again, when we had that performance initially, people were, as we say in Nigeria, hands on your neighbor's shoulders, please. They were more like, why would you talk about the water spirits? And I tell them, check the history of Athens, the Greek mythology. You hear about Dionysus. You talk about Hercules. You talk about Zeus. But when we talk about Owu, you begin to complain because of the incursion of Christianity in our domain. And for that reason, we have left all of the things that we need to do. And we began to search for things that we know little 
about nothing off. One with God is majority. And God has made it so possible that I am able to hear, to see. And through that, Seki was created. Don't forget, Seki is what? Dance. And dance predominantly in the Niger Delta area. In the west of Africa, is about Boa Seki, Ibiri. And in the early 19th century, when they took us away as slaves to the plantations in America, they could not find Ibiri. They found what? The metals or the shoe horses that gives you the same rhythm as a tap dancer. But originally, it's an Ibiri dance. Now, why are you allergic to your culture? Because you know little or nothing about it. Because you search more for the Western understanding of their own culture. Our cultures are different. Our culture is original. Our culture is authentic. And that is why today, in 2022, the whole world is going back to Africa. Looking for authentic stories from Africa. That African stories will go back into technology as content for them to know more about you. What are you doing with your story? Do you know your story? Have you asked your grandfather? Have you asked your grandmother? Have they told you about the stories of how two fishermen went out to fish? And in search of fish, they heard drums. And from everywhere on the sea, they saw spirits emerge. And those spirits, they hid somewhere, listened, and watched the performances of the spirits. They went back to the communities and told these stories. And these stories became what we now know as the masquerade dances of our people. Why are you allergic to your narrative? Why are you allergic to your story? Why are you allergic to your essence? They say, now man, we're not planning life well. Now they complain, saying, wish the warrior. If you do not plan your life well, then you begin to detest your life and assume erroneously that someone has the ability to your future. No. My name is Yubo Temeke. And that means that the child was born by a woman. But it was through the powers of God that I came out. Therefore, the destinies of the child does not lie in the hands of a woman. But my destiny, I can take it. And one with God, like I said, what is what? Majority. Understand your art forms. Understand Africa. Understand the authenticity of your art. If you do not, you will grope in the dark because you're searching for what? What you know little about or know nothing of. You search the web to find out how they do things. And in your backyard, you don't even know that it does exist for you to put on the web. What's your digital footprint? The world is what? A stage. The world right now is virtual. And virtual is one four square thing called what? The phone. Just upload your community. Upload your art forms. Upload all you need to teach them about Africa. Because your story becomes authentic. When your story is not authentic, it is what? Copycat. Seki is original. It showcases the beauty of our art forms. From the area dance, the Ojongowu, the Pambowu, the Ogwen, all of the masquerades that make up our communities. But when you listen to uh, music and hear Thor or watch Thor, you believe that there is a power with a European incursion in the art form on Marvel Comics. No, why don't you do your own Marvel in a marvelous way with your African authenticity? Why? It's a question I'm asking you because you come to ask me, why am I dressed like this? I love it. Why am I dressed like this? I love it. I love the color. Don't you love the color? Don't you love the color, so to speak? These colors are authentic and they are original. They are arty. Same thing. If you don't know how to do it, that I can tell you free of charge that the creative economy is now a toolkit for sustainable growth. Oh yes, it is. 
Seki right now is valued at over five million dollars. We have been to New York. We have been to St. Anna. We have been to Kingston, all in Jamaica. We have been to Dubai. We have also been to Democratic Republic of Congo. Why are we going there? We're going there because we have an authentic story. And the African Americans, everybody wants to know about the true African story. Are you telling your story? Do you know your story? If you do not know your story, then you can't tell your story. Therefore, search. Search for your story. The stories are littered around the communities. All you need to do is to ask. He who knows not and knows not that he knows not is a fool. But he who knows not and knows not that he knows not is a wise man. Be wise. Knowledge is power. And the only way you will know is when you ask. And when you ask, you discover. If you do not discover, you will complain and always cry that someone is bewitching you. No! You're bewitching yourself from lack of understanding. Fela says, I no go copy or you both style. That means I won't copy the white man. I must be original. Are you original? Are your artworks original? Until your artworks become original, originality will become alien to you because you have a copycat mentality. I don't copy. You can see the colors and the clutters of the costumes. I can't even begin to tell you how original these costumes are and how expensive they are because these things are authentic. And these are everyday costumes of the daily lives of the rivers, the Niger Delta, or the African. You want to wear a suit? Yes, that's okay. Even when we are in the tropics. But the beauty of our art form is in the understanding of it. If you do not understand it, then you won't appreciate it. And the only way you can appreciate it is don't act as if it is made of the devil. It is not. Our market squares, our town halls, our playgrounds are no more what they used to be because they have become what? Crusade grounds. And all of the beauties of our art forms are not. The average 40-year-old who lives in Portacot Township does not know much about the beauty of the art forms of the cultural essence of his community only during burials or maybe one or two traditional marriages as passing through but not in terms of the narrative of the history of these dance forms. Do you know your story? Have you asked the questions about your story? What is your story? I know my story. I am telling my story. I am connecting with people who know the best way to tell the story technically to conform to the best abilities of the West. But the authenticity of my story is still African. It is still original because I know the story. I didn't go to film school just to tell a story. No, I went to film school so that others would copy to know how to tell the stories with the science of the West. How Western are you? How African are you? Do you understand your African name? Until the white man answers, Tamuno Ibumi, my name will remain Yubo Koko. No John, no John Boo, no Henry, no Stephen. Tamuno Ibumi, Ibuko Ubo, Tamuno Mie. That, these, are the type of names because they haven't understand it. My daughter's name is Amoni Biayofori or in little terms, Amoni. What does that mean? I am content. Contentment is her name. Ajuboye Monike. I do not have any reason to be jealous of you. Amonia. I don't get jealous. Therefore, the meanings of our name, if you do not understand it, you'll be lost in that same labyrinth of the lack of knowledge. Therefore, I urge you at the 10th edition of TEDx, go home. Ask. Do not be shy from asking. Do not wallow in your ignorance because the African narrative, the African story is a story worth telling. But the only way you can tell the story is if you know the story. 
If you don't know the story, you shall always grope, searching, looking, and you will see nothing because you don't know what to look for. The only way you will know what to look for is to know what to look for. And how do you know? Ask. Don't pretend. Don't belong. Go back to your community. It is an art form that is what? Lucrative. Understand it as an asset. Know how to monetize it. Collaborate with people. When you do collaborate, yes, I was on CNN. I was on what? African Voices. When they saw me on African Voices, everybody wanted to associate themselves with me. Before they said it was Juju. Now because I was a CNN, they all wanted to be a part of it. Yes. Change your narrative. Be strong with your narrative. Once you do that, all, all, all of the elements of the art of the African comes back to you. Vision, they say, as the art of seeing things invisible. Please see and become a true African that would tell the right story. Thank you very much. Thank you.